somewhere at the end of that rainbow, there's $5 corn and $15 bushel soybeans. Now it's a beautiful evening out tonight. It's a Saturday evening. So by popular demand, thought I'm gonna do a little bit of a crop check, but in the process of doing so, kind of elaborate how I got started farming because I get asked all the time, if you're a first generation farmer, how'd you make it happen? Now, so for the second part of this video, that's for you guys. And I'm gonna show you guys some real life numbers and is it even possible to start farming as a first generation farmer? So about halfway through the video, it's gonna transition from my story to what could be your story. Now, first and foremost, I wanna say that I had a whole lot of help. I didn't get started on my own. The farm that you see all around is where I got my start. Up in the house right through those trees. Now the second thing is, all the ground around the house where I live, I farm, but it's not my crop. So I'll elaborate on that. I had help getting started from an older gentleman who I worked for for years. He and I had the agreement when I was in college, I had a lady offer to rent me 15 acres of ground. Now 15 acres of ground, obviously, to row crop especially, was not enough for me to make a living off farming. However, that 15 acres is how I got my start. So to those of you who think you're too small, oh, you just can't do it, I want you to hear me and hear me good. I started my first year farming on 15 acres. Now, I did it more just to kind of get my feet wet. I didn't do it to make a fortune because on 15 acres you're not going to, but I started farming two little six acre fields and little two and three acre patches where I could pick it up. I was literally farming people's backyards that they didn't want to mow and that's where I got my start farming. When I got started, I didn't have 50, 60 acre fields. I didn't have an 80 acre section. I didn't have 300 acre farms. I had 15 acres on 15 farms is what it seemed like. So the first year a lady approached me and she said, hey, I've got some ground and I'd like you to farm it. And I said, well, I don't farm. I just help a guy farm. Because at the time I just worked for the older gentleman that helped me get started. And she said, well, would you want to farm my ground? I thought, well, I don't have equipment. I don't have money for seed, chemical, fertilizer, none of it. And even on 15 acres, 17 year old me that was in high school at the time, didn't know how he was gonna come up with the money to plant 15 acres. So I got my start. I went to the FSA and I asked for a uh, beginning farmer loan. So for those of you who need the financial means to get started farming, I highly recommend the FSA. Um, it's the Farm Service Agency. It's a government agency, but they have some great programs um, for first generation farmers to get started. Um, they are loans, it's not free money. It's not a grant. I know there are some grants out there. I've never had any, all I've ever had is a loan. Now I don't like debt, I strongly dislike debt, but to get started farming, you either have to marry it, inherit it, or go into debt. And that's pretty much all there is to it. It's, it's gonna really be hard to get started farming any other way. Now when I say I started on a small amount of acreage, I worked my way up to what I farm now. So my second dilemma was I didn't have any equipment. So the guy that I'd helped farm for literally years and years and years, I asked him, I said, hey, I had a lady approach me about farming 15 acres of ground up the road. Will you lease me your equipment? He said, well, my equipment's older, it's smaller, it's not worth much. How about you just trade your labor and you use my equipment as long as you take care of it? So that's exactly what I did. Um, the first year that I farmed, I didn't own a single piece of equipment. Um, the second year, I picked up about a 120 acre farm as well as a few more patches and I was farming just around 200 acres and that's when I went half and half 
with the older gentleman that I'd kind of partnered with and I bought the 9330. Now this past year, I picked up a considerable amount of farm ground. Um, picked up roughly 400 more acres and uh, it was a big jump for me, not only financially, but just from a logistical standpoint, it was a lot more ground to handle. Now, that said, I still farm all of the ground that the older gentleman has, as well as my own, and I farm his for free, basically in return of using some of his equipment to farm my own ground as well. So he has several hundred acres as well that I farm for him, but it's still his crop, his grain. It's his cows, it's his hay, but you'll see me doing that work throughout this channel. Now, I don't want people to get the idea that everything's mine because that's far from the truth. And I want I want people to understand that. And I, I think it's come off kind of misleading from the get go, but I had help getting started. And if it weren't for him, I'm not saying that I wouldn't be farming at all, but I wouldn't be near the size I am. I wouldn't be in the position that I am to grow like I've been able to. Um, so I'm gonna kind of get into the numbers of that and the numbers of how to get started farming, but I just wanted you guys to kind of get a background of where I got my start. Now, if you're gonna get started farming from nothing, you have no family that owns ground, you have no equipment, you have no money, um, you're gonna need three things. Um, whether you're going to be a livestock operation, whether you're going to be in specialty crops, or whether you're gonna be a row crop operation like myself, you're gonna need land, you're gonna need equipment, and you're gonna need capital. Now I've been fortunate enough that I've been able to lease quite a bit of land that's become available. I've never been overly aggressive trying to pick up ground. I've never gone and beat on people's doors and walked up on their doorsteps asking for ground. I've always gone after ground that I knew was available, that I knew either a previous tenant was given up or was no longer gonna be farming. You know, the leases were up and the ground was open for bids, um, as well as people contacting me. The majority of the ground that I farm has been people that contacted me. Now I got one lease this year that's basically state ground it's an open bid and the highest bidder wins. Um, however, it's kind of not the best ground. It's a lot of small little patches. And most people around here with big equipment just, they don't want to mess with it. They don't, their equipment's so large that it just doesn't make sense for them to farm it. Now me having some smaller stuff, I can make it work. I'm not saying that those patches aren't a complete pain because they are. But that's what I got started farming was six acre patches the first year I farmed. So I'm kind of all right with it. The second thing you're gonna need is equipment. And equipment is something that's very, very, very expensive, um, whether you lease it or buy it. I'm able to farm with the equipment that I have because a lot of it I didn't have to buy. Um, the guy I started farming with, he had a full lineup of equipment where Rather than me buying a tractor, a planter, a combine, tillage tools, truck, cart, you name it, I only had to buy some of those things. And basically, as I've progressed and got more ground, he's allowed me to kind of use his equipment as trade-in and pay the difference to upgrade things where he's got a bigger, newer piece of machinery as well as I have a bigger, newer piece of machinery. I pay the difference in the cost and it allows both of us to be more efficient. Now, he doesn't run any equipment anymore. He's got some health issues that don't allow him to do that. We're hoping to get that lined out where he can get back in the tractor cab, he can get back in the combine, but we know the chances of that are about 50-50 at this point. And, you know, pray for him every day. We really hope that that happens um, because, you know, for a guy that's farmed all his life, it kills him to be cooped up in the house and not be able to run equipment. To us, farming is more than just a job. It's kind of a way of life. And so when that's taken from you, it's very, very difficult. But he is the reason that I've been able to 
run the equipment I do. I mean, the planter, the Steiger, and the combine, that's three things that I've put forth money to have. The rest of the equipment is pretty much his. Um, so I've been really fortunate to be able to be in a position to have this equipment at my disposal. My dad, none of my family, none of my uncles, my grandparents, none of them ever farmed. So there was no equipment or land to be passed down to me. Um, which, you know, that's life. It is what it is. We're not all born into it, but that's not to say that you can't get into it. Um, but what I would highly recommend is, is find somebody who doesn't have anybody to take over the family farm, who, you know, will kind of cut you some deals where you can afford to get into it and they have the peace of mind that their legacy is going to be carried on for generations and generations, you know, not necessarily under the same name, but it's going to be well managed the way that they've taught you to manage that ground and how to manage that operation. Because everything I know, I have to credit to him for teaching me the way he's taught me. And he farms in a very old school, traditional way, but there's years and years and years of knowledge up in that guy's head and he's been able to teach me everything I know and then some. So that covers land and that covers equipment but the third thing you're gonna need to start farming is capital. You're gonna have to have money. Now the best way to make a million dollars farming is to start with two million dollars and people say that as a joke but honestly it's not far from the truth. Um, farming's expensive. I mean, an acre of corn around here, by the time you have your rent, your seed, your fertilizer, all your input costs in, your equipment, your fuel, you can easily be looking well over $600 an acre to put that crop out, which 600 bucks isn't, you know, a whole lot, but you take $600 and you start putting out several hundred acres of corn and before you know it, you got a whole lot of money wrapped up in just putting a crop out. So as I complete my little lap around the uh, block checking out some crops, which don't look bad, I must say, we're gonna head back to the house, head back to the office, and I'm gonna go show you guys some, some real numbers that I've really been tossing around, you know, do I show this, do I not, but I'm gonna show you some numbers that aren't far from my own numbers. I'm not gonna show my own numbers, but I wanna show some numbers, you know, basically how you can get started farming. Now it takes a lot of money, and where I got my money to start farming is through the FSA. They had some awesome programs that were low interest. That interest was fixed. My operating loans have been through them. My equipment loans have been through them and they've been great to deal with. One of the best things I did when I started farming is I had off the farm income. Now, up until this year, I worked at UPS and it was part time, but it was a second source of income. Now this spring I was faced with kind of a hard decision. Do I give up a steady paycheck and health insurance and benefits to farm full time? Or do I try and do both? And I had gotten to the point where I was farming enough ground, um, not only my own, but this ground around the house as well, where it got to the point where I was so busy all the time, it was difficult to work another job and farm. The hours where I was working at UPS was early in the morning. I mean, I would get up two, three, four in the morning and work, get off, get in the tractor first thing. And a lot of times I would run the tractor till, you know, 11 o'clock midnight. I'd run off three, maybe four hours of sleep a night if I was lucky. And that's something that if you're gonna get started farming, that's kind of a reality of it. You've gotta be able to work those hours. You gotta be able to put up with it. Now I wasn't making a fortune at a part-time job. But what I was able to do is never to use money from the farm account 
to pay my own bills. Um, my water, my electric, my cost of living, that was all covered just by my secondary income. One thing I can't stress enough, if you're gonna get started farming, there is a point where you farm enough that you can farm full time. However, that's gonna be different for every operation. You don't have to farm the most ground to be the most profitable farmer. By keeping your overhead costs low, you can make way more an acre than the guys that are farming 10, 15,000 acres. Now, the bigger you get, the easier it is to keep your overhead lower because you're spreading that cost out over several thousand acres, several hundred acres. But the bigger you get, typically the easier, I don't want to say the easier it gets, but the easier it gets to spread that cost. There's a fine line in every operation of what works and what doesn't, and no two operations are the same. So I'm going to kind of start to touch on those numbers and show you guys how you can get started farming. So this figure right here, 24,334 is the average cost of living after entertainment, insurance, you name it, housing, food, everything all together in a rural American setting. You're looking at roughly $24,000 a year. Now I would say by the time you've got your mortgage, your car payment, your internet, your electric, your phone bill, that's pretty realistic. So we're going to round down because if you're going to start farming, you're going to start balling on a budget. So we're going to call that 20,000 a year for easy math off the top. That's what you need just to feed yourself. Now the second thing you're really going to need, you're going to need some land for a home base to park your equipment, possibly put up a shed. Heck, it might be a cheap hoop building, but it's something that you're out of the weather. You can put equipment in. So Say you're gonna buy 20, 30 acres, we'll call it 40, um, and we'll say that 35 of that 40 is going to be your tillable ground, and then five acres is gonna be your farmstead, your house sets on it, whatever. This is the Purdue Agricultural Economics Report for 2020, so this is what I'm basing my numbers off of. Indiana, I am in southwest Indiana. Average corn, about 180 bushel. Top corn, 211. So we're gonna use about $7,100 an acre. That's what land's gonna cost us. So when you take your $7,100 an acre on your 40 acre parcel, you're already at $287,000. That's what it cost you for 40 acres. No buildings, no nothing just the land alone. And honestly, around here, if that's all you paid, I'd say you're doing pretty good because I know of a whole lot of land that's selling for more than that around here. So you take your 40 acre cost, about your current interest rate now on a 30 year loan, you got $1,300 and some change per year times 12 months. Your land cost a year is $16,000 almost the same as what your cost of living is. So for the sake of getting started, we're gonna say our equipment costs are roughly $80 an acre. Our $80 an acre on 330 acres is $26,000 a year. Now, $26,000 is not a lot of money when it comes to equipment. Most equipment loans are on a five-year contract, or a five-year loan, I should say. So you got a $132,000 budget, we'll say, to pay off in five years to farm your 330 acres. Now that can be done. Um, I'm gonna break that down. I'm gonna make a little bit of an equipment list here. Now, that said, if you only have a $130,000 budget to buy your entire lineup of equipment, you're probably gonna do some custom hiring. You'll probably hire somebody to spread your own fertil or spread the fertilizer for you, do your own do the spraying for you, you know, you're going to have some jobs that you're going to hire out, whether that be trucking, spraying, fertilizer, whatever it might be. Secondly, if you've got a $130,000 budget, you're really going to need to know how to turn wrenches because you're going to be buying older equipment that, let's face it, needs work. Now, the older equipment's easier to work on, 
it's got a lot more simplicity to it but it is it's older equipment at the end of the day you are going to have to turn wrenches on it that's not to say new equipment you don't have to work on you do but you need a good set of wrenches if you're going to buy all your equipment for $130,000. So for our equipment, I'm just going random prices. I'm not being colorblind here, all brands, all balling on a budget. First tractor, I'm going 50 to 120 horse for 12,000. This one's cheaper. You throw a little work in it, you're running around 12,000. Keep in mind, these are all ballpark numbers. They are not, you know, definite this is what you're gonna spend on every piece of equipment. This is just general ballpark. Second tractor, we're saying 150 to 200 horse. There's a case, 1570. Appears to be in decent shape, $13,000. So that gives you two tractors, a big one for big jobs and a little one for little jobs. That's simple enough. Now something I'm gonna say is if you're gonna start farming, don't worry so much about your tractors. Get one that's reliable and stays in the field, but it doesn't have to have a bunch of creature comforts and amenities. As long as it pulls a tool, that's all you need it to do. As long as it stays in the field and doesn't cause you a bunch of headaches with breakdowns, that's all you need. It doesn't have to be the newest, the prettiest, or the nicest to do its job. The two things you need to do their job and do it well is your planter and your combine. Which this brings us to our next two items. This is a 611 Kinsey planter. It's basically the baby version of what I have. That gives you the ability to plant corn or soybeans through one planter, and it's not a lot of money. We're gonna call the price tag on this 15,000 because say you need openers or some units rebuilt, whatever it might be, we'll call it 15,000 after you put a little work into it. Next on the list would be a combine. Now this is an older New Holland combine. It comes with a corn head and a bean head for $15,000. Now, if you listen to one thing from this video about equipment, listen to this. It doesn't matter what color it is, it doesn't matter what brand it is. It matters, can you get parts for it and can you work on it? Because they all break down. It doesn't matter what you buy, they will all break down. If you can still get parts for it, you can get service for it, and you can work on it yourself, it's the right choice for you if you get a good deal on it and it does a good job in the field. So even though they're asking $15,000, it is no thing at all to stick several thousand in a combine in a hurry. So we're gonna call our combine $20,000. Here's what we got so far. Let's keep moving. Now, I am a believer that no-till has its place and the planter we put on here is a no-till planter but I would recommend having some kind of tillage tool to fill in ruts, level up a field, whatever it may be. It doesn't hurt to have a piece of tillage equipment laying around. So I would say buy a couple pieces of cheap old iron. You can drag them out of the weeds and put new hoses, bearings, and tires on them and have next to nothing in them. So let's find some cheap tillage. I'm not saying you have to run tillage, but most people are going to carry a tillage tool of some sort. So here we have a disc which you can use in the fall to disc down stalks. You can use it to fill in ruts or if you make enough passes you can even use it as a finishing tool. I'm not saying it's ideal for every one of those jobs but it is pretty universal. You can use it for a little bit of every one of those jobs. It's a 21 foot so that 1570 case would have pulled it fine. So we'll call this $3,000 for the sake of all everything. Say it needs some hoses or whatever it might be. There we go. So say your disc doesn't do the finishing job that you'd like it to do. Here's a field cultivator. We'll call it another 3,000 for tillage. Now, next on the list, you're gonna to need to move grain one way or another. Whether you hire somebody to do your own trucking or to do your trucking for you, or say you just, you wanna do it yourself. You want to not have to wait on a truck to be there every time. There's cheap gas drain, grain trucks out there. There's cheap gravity wagons, but for the sake of moving something to the elevator, let's say buy a grain truck. Now, everybody's situation is gonna be a little bit different. Semi is probably not gonna be real feasible, so let's find a cheap grain truck right here. 
So you might get about two miles to the gallon with it, but it'll move grain. Say it needs some brakes, it needs some tires. We'll call it 5,000. Having a truck opens up the ability to put grain in a bin, rent some bins, market some grain. It's something I prefer to do. I'm not saying it's the right thing for everybody. Some years you're better off just hiring a truck to come to the field, pick up your grain, and haul it straight to the elevator. But I would recommend, you know, if, the, if there's bins around that you could rent, you know, put back some of your grain just so you can play the market just a little bit. Now remember when I initially said we're setting our budget for equipment at $135,000 over five years? Well, we did a lot better than that. You got two tractors, a planter, a combine, disc, cultivator, grain truck, and I put 5,000 for miscellaneous, whether that's a bush hog or some kind of specialty tool you want, we're at $77,000. Now, really, that figure makes your overhead low enough. You could afford to buy a pull type sprayer. You could afford to buy other tools that could keep your overhead lower, make you money in more ways than one. Um, so $77,000, makes us reevaluate this number and cut it almost in half. So instead of $26,000 a year, we're now at $17,000, and that gives you the ability to upgrade some equipment, and your overhead's not so high that you're worried about paying back loans. If you can buy equipment for that, do it, and you're not worried about if you have a bad year, you're not going to be able to make your payments. The lower you keep everything over here, the better you are and the more apt you'll be able to replace these things in the good years you have, and you're not borrowing that money and worried about, can I pay for it? Keep these numbers as low as you can. That said, you cannot save yourself into prosperity. So we're saying you bought 40 acres, okay? You rent another 300. That brings us to, we're going to say 150 acres of corn and 150 acres of beans. Now right here is what average rent is in my area. Now I'm not saying that it's not upwards of that in places, but on average, it's right about $180 an acre. So we're going to say you rent 300 acres for $180 an acre. Suddenly, your rent alone costs you $54,000 a year to rent that 300 acres. Now you add that with the 40 acres you bought at an additional $16,000 a year, you're at $70,000 a year just for your land cost to farm 330 acres. You add your equipment, your cost of living up on top of that, you're looking at another 40,000 on top of the 70. You're well over $100,000 a year and you haven't even bought the first kernel of seed the first pound of fertilizer yet. So with not all the ground you bought being tillable, we're gonna say you're gonna put out 160 acres of corn, 160 acres of soybeans, we're hitting that 300 acres plus what you bought. Now your custom costs, that's gonna be hiring somebody to do your fertilized spreading, to do your spraying for you. Crop insurance on corn, about $12 an acre, $9 on beans, and I'm throwing miscellaneous of $20 an acre in there. Now I'm gonna use numbers that are really close to my own numbers for seed, chemical, and fertilizer, just to keep this accurate. But we're also going to go off a spreadsheet here that I've pulled up on the good old interwebs. So for corn following soybeans, we're gonna go at 180 bushel average. And then we're gonna go down for soybeans following corn, we're gonna go about a 55 bushel average. These are the numbers I'm gonna use, so for seed, you're looking at about $50 an acre on your soybeans. So these numbers are not far off from mine on corn and soybeans. This is what you're gonna have in an acre of each. I highly recommend if you are gonna get started farming, make yourself spreadsheets and update your numbers all the time. Know what your break even is per bushel and know how many bushels you have to grow and at what price you sell them to be profitable. As a matter of fact, both of my spreadsheets for corn and soybeans are right in another tab. Now for the sake of competitive neighbors, I'm not gonna show you my name numbers, but have your numbers and have them as close to accurate as you can have them. Not only on your input costs here, but machinery costs, cash rent, you name it, 
have your numbers as accurate as possible. So you total these numbers up, you got about $278 an acre in corn and about $180 or $190 an acre in soybeans. Now I'm gonna flip the page over and start something else. And I'm gonna add our rent and our equipment costs in into this and that'll really give you what it costs per acre and are you going to be profitable or not. So when you take your total input costs and you add your rent and equipment in, there's your total corn cost per acre, your total soybean cost per acre. Now for income, I'm figuring 180 bushel corn at 330 a bushel, 55 bushel beans at 910 a bushel. That's about what the average price and average yield is around here, which leaves you with $81 an acre on corn and $85 an acre on beans. So you're taking that times your 160 acres a piece, and here's what we come up with. So after you figure this, you've made $26,560. But wait, you still have your cost of living and your home base land cost because you bought that 40 acres. So you still owe the bank $36,000 and you only made 26. So the end of the year, you lost $10,000 and worked your butt off all year long. Guys, this is the harsh reality of starting out farming where you have to buy all your equipment, buy your land, rent your ground, start from scratch. You're going to lose money starting out until you pay some of that equipment off and you build some assets. So can you get started farming from nothing? Yes. Is it going to be difficult? Yes. Can it be done? Yes. What I'm going to recommend, keep a second job. Don't farm full time. In fact, don't farm full time until you think you can farm full time on your own and make it work and then wait three more years and then go farm full time. Take it from me. I wish I'd have waited. I didn't. I've got other job offers right now, and it's something that I'm considering, but I'm also on the brink of potentially picking up more ground for next year. Guys, you just got to run your own numbers. These numbers are vague, but you can start farming, and I wanted to give everybody a background of where I got started farming, how I got started farming, and my backstory. Again, not all the equipment is mine. Not everything you see in these videos is mine is me is me farming it it's i i want you guys to understand that it is not easy to get started farming you will inevitably lose money some years you'll inevitably make money some years the farm economy is not good right now prices are low yields are iffy depending on what part of the country you're in you can start farming i'm not going to be the guy that tells you you can't I am going to be the guy that tells you it's going to be incredibly difficult, but it's going to be incredibly rewarding, and nothing worth having was ever got just being handed to you, all right? You're going to appreciate it so much more when you've worked for it and you've got your own blood, sweat, and tears invested into it. So I just wanted to make a video of kind of my backstory, how I got started farming, and is it possible to start farming on your own and do the same thing? It is I recommend, you know, get in with an older farmer, somebody that doesn't have, you know, anybody to take over and not necessarily to take over their operation, but just to learn from them. Because a lot of us, you know, we learned because we worked on a farm. We didn't learn because we were taught in some classroom. You don't learn farming in a classroom. I've got a college degree in ag business. I learned more on the farm than I ever did in the classroom. So, my advice, find a farmer that'll take you under their wing and just stop and listen. Don't be a know-it-all. Just take it in. Every operation's different. Every operation's numbers are different. But you can start farming on your own. But it's going to be difficult, and I highly recommend having a second source of income to do it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it gives you kind of a backstory of where I got my start of where my operation's at, you know, I don't claim to be the biggest farmer, the newest equipment, the biggest equipment, and I'm not out to be the biggest farmer with the newest equipment. 
I'm out to be profitable and sustainable and grow a good business that I can pass on to hopefully the next generation after me. So hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, um, drop a comment below. I'm sure I'm going to get some criticism for this. Hopefully I get some constructive feedback as well. I'm new to this. I'm not an expert at this. I'm just kind of sharing with you guys who have been asking a lot of questions, kind of some backstory behind it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and thanks for watching.